This is lesson 9, using the cross-section tool in the Geomagic for SolidWorks plugin. We'll start as always by creating a new document and using the Geomagic for SolidWorks import to bring open cross-sections.stl. The cross-sections tool is the first step in creating a mechanically reverse-engineered workflow. The first thing that we need to create a cross-section is, of course, a reference plane. So I'm going to build one on the side of my object first using the Smart Selection tool. Then I'll select the Cross-Sections tool. I've got my only mesh here pre-selected for me, and I do need to select the planar entity that this cross-section is going to live on. Now, this plane passes directly through a mesh a little bit, and that's why I get this sort of jagged edge here. What I need to do is I need to offset this cross-section plane into the part slightly so that I get a cleaner cross-section and get the profile that I'm looking for, which is this shape here. To do that, I'm going to add an offset, maybe 10 thousandths, and watch how my cross-section changes. This black preview is going to show me where my plane intersects the scan data. I can increase that offset until I get section. Now the output options that I have are to either build my cross section as a reference polyline in a new sketch or try and fit line and arc sections to that polyline. I can also build that polyline as a spline. When I hit accept, a new sketch is created in the history tree and anywhere where I had intersection between my scan data and that plane is built with a polyline. If I hide my mesh, I can see that polyline more clearly. This is usually the preferred method because I can enter this mesh sketch now and edit it just like I would any other sketch inside of SOLIDWORKS. If I use my normal two, I can see myself square on and all of these entities are fixed. That's why they're black and they have the anchor icon next to them. My job here is to now use the SOLIDWORKS tools to copy the portions of the polyline that I need. For example, I can fit a line from this point to that point. I can also fit things like three-point arcs to my polyline. This sketch can then be used to create CAD geometry. Now let's look at a couple of the other modes inside of that cross-section tool. I'm gonna hide my original sketch here, and I'm going to show my mesh again. This time I'd like to create a cross-section using this front plane here. So I'll extract another plane with my reference plane tool, smart selection here, and here. With that plane built, I'll enter the cross-section tool again, and I'll see what offset I need to create a new polyline. That's very nice and clean, and this is a fairly prismatic shape. So instead of creating construction geometries, I can try and fit line and arc sections to everything that I see. If I use the line and arc section, I can fix everything and close the curve. This should give me, if I've got good scan data, a watertight sketch that I can go directly into modeling with.
So that sketch now, if I go to my Features tab, should be able to be extruded. I'll do one more. If we create a new cross section plane on this area of the scan data here, and enter the cross section tool again, I'll select that plane and I'm going to offset it in the opposite direction. So I'm going to use my flip curves here to offset into the prongs. I'm going to change my offset value. And in this case, if all I want to see is this area here, I can limit the cross section that the software is creating by creating a selection to ignore these other two prongs. That's what this limited to selection area is. If I choose my smart select here, I can recognize right now I'm creating cross sections on my other two areas that I'd like to ignore. My smart select tool will allow me to select the geometry that I'm interested in. And you can see that the polylines in this other area disappear. If I would like to build this as a spline, I can select the spline tool select how intricate I want that spline to be, points, and hit OK.